Computers as we know them today are common appliances, ever present in modern life. Nearly everyone watching this video has a computer in their pocket with more power than room-filling mainframes that ran business just three decades ago. We take them for granted, just as we do a toaster or refrigerator. For two decades now, kids have grown up with them, never knowing a world without these digital devices. But it used to be very different. Back in the 1970s, computers were big panels of flashing lights and spinning reels of tape that magically thought for themselves, science fiction on television and in movie theaters. The general public knew nothing of them other than what fantasy had painted for them on the silver screen. There were hobbyists, though people that experimented with electronics and radio, and even then, in the early 1970s, there were computer hobbyists. The invention of the transistor had led to integrated circuits, small packages crammed with transistors and resistors, complete circuits. Microprocessors were being created in the industry, and large computers existed. Physically huge and power-hungry, these beasts of the time were less than anemic when compared to even the small Arduino of today's hobbyists. So, what was the average experimenter to do? The best of them would purchase parts and build their own limited computer at home. Intel had produced the 8008 microprocessor in April 1972. It was an 8-bit CPU with an external 14-bit bus that could address 16K of memory. In 1973, Nate Wadsworth and Bob Finley formed CB Computer Consulting, and designed the CB8H Computer Kit. The first computer kit that was sold to hobbyists, it was priced at an amazing, for the time, $440. $500 if you wanted 1K of memory with it. Yes, 1K. The kit was first advertised in the March 1974 issue of QST Magazine, a publication for amateur radio operators. If you wanted to upgrade the machine, you could buy an additional 15K of RAM for, get this, $2,700. This was a real computer that one could have in their own home, but far removed from what we think of as a computer today. It was programmed by manually flipping switches on the front to enter a program one byte at a time into memory. Its output consisted of a series of lights across the top. Later in 1974, a graduate student by the name of Jonathan Titus designed a competing kit called the Mark 8, also built around the 8008 processor from Intel. It was provided as plans and relied on the builder to purchase all the parts and make his own board. Later in 1974, Titus provided boards for $50, but the builder still had to buy the parts. By 1975, Intel had released the 8080 CPU, and interest was growing among hobbyists. A company called MITS, M-I-T-S, introduced the Altair 8800 kit, often thought of as the first hobby computer. The Altair sold for $439 in kit form, equivalent to almost $2,000 in today's money. Tedious, again, it was programmed step-by-step -step with switches on the front, providing output only through lights on the front panel. The Altair did have a major improvement for builders, the S100 bus. The computer was constructed on cards that plugged into the slots of the bus, allowing for all manner of add-on cards to be built for it over time. Bill Gates actually got his start with Microsoft and um, Altair by writing BASIC for the Altair. It was revolutionary at the time. Now hobbyists could write their own software more quickly. Cards for the Altair gave it serial ports for using a terminal to program it and to actually see text output. The home computer was beginning to resemble what we think of today. In 1975, MOS Technology introduced the 8-bit 6502 microprocessor, first seen in the Apple I, introduced the following year. Well, we all know the guys responsible for that machine, and they did provide it in kit form at the time. In 1976, Zilog released the Z80 CPU, also an 8-bit processor, and new kits began to appear. Over in England, around 1977, a fellow named Chris Shelton designed the NASCOM 1 kit. Later that same year, the NASCOM 2, which included a keyboard and video output. Both were based on the Z80. In Finland and Sweden, another kit had been released called the Telmac 1800. It was based on a little-known CPU from RCA, the 1802. It came with 2K of RAM and was expandable to 4K. 1977 was a busy year in the computer hobby. 
Motorola had just released the 6800 CPU, and in England, another kit was available based on the new chip, the new Bear 77-68. Similar to the earlier Altair, it was programmed by a series of switches across the front. Eventually expanded to include a serial interface for use with a terminal and provided with a version of the basic language. The popular kit provider Heathkit got into the game in 1977 with the H8. Built on the Intel 8080 chip, this machine used a series of buttons on the front and LED character displays uh, for output. Heathkit soon offered a terminal for use with the H8, also provided in kit form. In 1978, well, we didn't see much in the way of computer kits with the only uh, with only one release. The Cambridge MK14 kit was based on a national semiconductor CPU, and it was weak even by the standards of the day. It came with 128 bytes of memory expandable to 256 bytes. Eventually, there was a video output module for it, but it was really more of a development board. It wasn't much of a computer, per se. Uh, However, in 1979, we finally started to see some more consumer-friendly kits. The SciComp 80, produced by the British firm Powertran, was based on the Z80 CPU. It came with 8K of RAM plus 2K of video RAM. In uh, 1979 as well, another company appeared on the kit scene, Acorn Micro. Acorn would be around for a long time, producing very popular home computers through the 1980s. The Acorn 1 kit was a two-board system based around the MOS 6502 chip. Originally designed by an undergrad student named Sophie Wilson as an automatic cow feeder, it became Acorn's first consumer product and gained popularity as a hobby kit. Acorn would go on to produce um, several uh, very popular computers in the 80s, full desktop systems. This was just their beginning. 1980 and 1981 were the last two years for the early hobby computer kits, with the release of the Sinclair ZX80 and ZX81 kits. These small machines were based on the Z80 CPU and provided in a consumer-friendly small plastic case with a membrane keyboard, produced by Cambridge Research and designed by Clive Sinclair. The ZX80 came with 1K of RAM and an RF output for connecting to a television. Sold in England for £100 in kit form, it was one of the first home computers to gain popularity with the general public. The ZX81 came out in 1981 and sold well in England as well as in other countries, including the U.S. It was provided as a kit for £50 or assembled for £70. The U.S. version of the ZX81 was distributed by Timex, the watchmaker, as the Timex Sinclair ZX81. This was my first home computer, purchased for $70 U.S. The ZX81 was consumer-friendly and expandable. It plugged right into your TV and had an expansion slot on the back. Of course, it was based on the Z80 CPU. It came with 1K of RAM, expandable to 56K of usable memory. Commercial software and games were also released for it, and it was sold all the way up to the very early 1990s. The ZX81 was probably the last popular home computer to be offered in kit form. Beyond that, consumer interest in home computing had grown to the point where complete systems were selling well. Apple II... Commodore PET, uh, Commodore VIC-20, Commodore 64, the Atari's 400 and 800, Radio Shack had the TRS-80. Many computers were available through the early 80s, and the kits just weren't in demand anymore. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this little look at the early uh, hobby kit computers, and thank you for watching.